Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we've got a familiar face back, Miss Kim's 2015 Ford Power Stroke. Last time you've seen this truck, you can check out the link here, it had a failed turbocharger. That's what we've got on the table, but hang tight. We're not just talking about the boring factory turbocharger that fails and doesn't make power and has tons of drive pressure. We're talking about something, a bigger picture and how to make more power. First off, we're gonna jump into this turbocharger. We're gonna show you the components that fell. We're gonna size up the turbocharger. And of course, we've got the surprise underneath the hood that ends with a dyno session. So diving into the factory turbocharger, let's hit the high notes. On the front, we call that the compressor wheel. Your factory turbocharger on the 15 plus is 60 millimeters. On the back, take a look, it is 63 millimeters. We make anywhere between 560 on your 15 to 16 trucks to 590 on your 17 plus models. So they make some pretty good power, but they're just inefficient. Back here, you can take a look at the veins. Air's gotta flow through there, then out through the turbine wheel. It just doesn't really allow the truck to make efficient power. Now, what failed on this turbocharger? Well, let's pick up the compressor housing where the compressor wheel sits into. Two pieces of aluminum here. This is the cover. This, I don't work on turbos every day, so this is new knowledge to me because, hey, this doesn't happen all the time, but it happened on this and it fell. The compressor wheel sits inside here. It was just rocking around inside this housing the whole time. Well, what happens there is when metal from the compressor wheel here, you can see all the teeth are chewed up. That was just grinding into it. What happens is when those metal shavings come off there, they go into the intercooler. If the intercooler doesn't catch it, they have fins in there, it goes into the engine. If you put metal inside of an engine that should have only air and fuel, what are you gonna have? Potentially, you're gonna have a catastrophic failure. So as you can tell, I'm not a big fan of the factory BGT turbochargers. But I just told you guys, I've got a surprise underneath the hood that's supposed to deliver a lot of benefits out of the 15 plus power strokes. What is it? So you guys are getting the first look at the brand new drop-in BGT turbocharger right off the bat. It's a 6366. Guys, we got the opportunity to test this turbocharger out. It's not released to the public. The best part about that is, one, yes, the turbocharger was given to us, but guess what? We're giving it back because we're upgrading to our F4, F5 HP package. So let's paint the big picture. We've got a turbocharger that's a factory VGT drop-in that's supposed to deliver all the good about all the bad I talk about on a factory turbocharger. High drive pressure, it's supposed to fix that. More boost pressure, right? Because with more boost, we would deliver more power. All in all, it's supposed to be a more efficient turbocharger. There's only one way to prove this. This turbocharger's on the truck. We're gonna show you guys the numbers. We're gonna show you guys the boost pressure. We're gonna show you guys the drive pressure. We're gonna put the same file in it that we've made 560 rural horsepower out of this little guy with three more millimeter on the compressor and three more on the exhaust wheel, can we make that much more efficient power? There's only one way to find out. It's dyno time. This truck laid down 503 rubble horsepower and 1,022 foot-pounds of torque. Now guys, that's not super impressive numbers, but again, this is a R&D turbocharger, and hey, we're gonna give you the front and the back story. Now this turbocharger, we wanted a one-to-one -one compression ratio, and did we achieve that? Now we've gotta look at the EasyLink data. We're gonna throw it up here, take a look at it. Remember me touching base on drive pressure? That's something I harp about all the time, and the biggest majority of the reason why we take off 
VGT turbochargers and put on non-VGTs. We're not 100% biased, but kind of. Look at the boost pressure, 42.1. So we actually picked up more boost pressure than we can get out of the 15 plus trucks with the same mods. But here's the big kicker, the drive pressure. You can see it in the red, it's 72.1. We're almost a one to two ratio. Guys, we're not gonna make power at that kind of drive pressure. The turbocharger's putting it down, but you have to understand this. Boost pressure is just resistance to flow. You can have 100 PSI of boost pressure, but all that means is you have people running down a tunnel and they can't get down it fast enough. So you're holding them back. You want it into the engine. So boost is just a number. You wanna make it efficient. I'm gonna prove it to you. We're gonna to go to the truck. We're gonna unplug the VGT solenoid. We're gonna do a dyno pull with the veins wide open and I guarantee you we will make more power. Dyno time. Taking a look at the graph, what do we lay down? 515 rear wheel, massive horsepower, right? 12 more than we just done. Torque, 947. We're gonna lose torque, we're gonna dive in that in a second. First, let's pull up the EasyLink data here. Take a look at the boost pressure. Where did I achieve this power? At 31 pounds of boost. Now keep in mind, at 42 pounds of boost, we made 503 rear wheel horsepower. So, how does that make sense? We actually lowered the boost pressure, made 12 more horsepower. Now, focus on the torque. We lost torque. Remember, I went to the truck, and I went to the turbocharger, and I unplugged the variable geometry turbocharger solenoid. So that's the reason why the turbocharger cannot create that torque, because we're not taking it from a smaller turbo to a bigger turbocharger, or actuating it. I wanted the veins to stay open the whole time to see the potential of the turbocharger and that's exactly what we proved. That if the veins were open and the engine did not have all that restriction, we can make more power, but more efficiently we can make it at 31 pounds of boost versus 42 pounds of boost. I just wanted to prove that point to you guys that these diesels are not like gas burners. You do not need a significant amount of boost pressure with extreme high drive pressure. You're not gonna make any more power, but moving on. So guys, what's the next step? So guys, time's up. With this truck, it's been about a month since you guys actually got to see it on the dyno. We reached out to the company and said, hey, are you gonna have time to get us a VGT turbocharger? Because we're about to begin on a new package. They haven't had the time, so guys, we're not gonna mention their name about who actually built this turbocharger till they get us a new one, we test it, then we'll share it with you. Moving forward, this truck's here, why? Because it's getting our F5 HP package. That means new engine, new transmission, two turbochargers, two fuel pumps. This dude's gonna lay down some power. So guys, if you're a forward owner, if you have any questions about the entire video or the F5 HP package, make for sure you drop them below. And we'll see you next week here at Point Blank Performance.